Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails. I'm Dave Kamira, and today we have Emmanuel bringing us the updates. If you'd like to receive your own copy of This Week in Rails newsletter, you can go to rubyonrails.org forward slash newsletter to receive your own copy. So let's go ahead and dive right in. For the first item, we have create a class level with routing helper. And this is for your tests where you can easily, at the class level, create some different routes. And the nice part about this is that at the class level, it'll then support building and then tearing down after each test. For the next item, allow composite primary key to be derived from schema. And this is an interesting one because with the support for the composite primary keys, you're going to be able to ditch that ID column in favor of your primary key being multiple different columns. But now it is going to get derived from the schema. So if you are using the schema.rb, then that should be your source of truth as far as what the database structure should be. Or if you're not using the schema.rb, then you're going to be using something like a structure.sql. And for the next item, store connection pool in database related exceptions. And this is a nice one because if you ever have to deal with an issue at the database level and you're really not sure what's going on, then you could run into some just obscurity where you don't really have the full picture. And by having that connection pool in the database related exceptions, then that could maybe help hopefully expose some the missing bits of information that you didn't have that would help you solve the issue. And the nice bit about this is that the context that it's providing includes information about the connection that triggered the exception. And for the next item, add engine draw paths to app. And so if you're using that draw helper, which essentially allows you to create routing partials within your routes that will just make it easier to manage and to maintain, then you don't necessarily get those accessible to your main application. Well, with this change, it now gets exposed to that app level so you can properly access the different routings within your engine. And the next item, improve quoted parameters and mind types. And so this is a situation where there was a bug and there's a bug fix for that where there were some different characters within the mime types and it threw an error with the invalid mime type. And so it's going to do a better job of handling like the backslash double quotes and stuff like that. And for the last item, support batching using composite primary keys and multiple column ordering. So if you are using the composite primary keys, then you would be able to do your querying like you normally would. Or if you're doing the find each, find in batches or in batches, then you may want to order the records in a certain way based on the composite primary key. So if you had like a first name, last name that you're using as your composite primary key, and honestly, that would probably not be a good one. But if you were using that, and if you wanted to sort it by the last name and the first name, then you now have the ability to pass in the order with the array for the number of different composite primary keys you have or the individual keys and say that you want it to be descending for the first column and then ascending for the second column. And over the past week, there are 30 contributors to the Rails framework. So again, I just appreciate everyone who has helped contributing to Rails and just making it a really wonderful framework. So again, thank you. Well, that's all for this video coverage of This Week in Rails. Thanks for watching.